In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use bookmarks on your timeline to trigger actions. So bookmarks have been around for a little while now. They were introduced in Adobe Captivate 2019 as a way for you to trigger certain events over top of slide video, specifically interactive video. But now it's been extended to be able to be used on any slide that you wish. So I can place bookmarks throughout any of my slides on any point in the timeline and use those to actually trigger various actions. One example of how you could use that is you could have a multi-state object, perhaps you know, multiple text items within a single object, or you could even have images with different poses or different states, and then use the bookmarks to trigger changing those from one state to the other. Let me show you how you would do it. Okay, so here's an example of a slide that you might want to add this sort of capability to. So we have an image of Angela and we've got some text on screen. And as you can see down in the timeline here, I've added the audio, which is really just the same text here. Let's preview this and see what we're working with. When you describe something as medically probable, it is more than 50% likely that the condition was work-related. You don't have to be sure. It just has to be likely related to the work performed on the job. Describing the reason as medically possible rather than probable indicates uncertainty regarding the exposure and the medical condition. Okay, so that works, but it's pretty boring. There's a lot of things that we could do to improve upon this, but one of the things that I wanted to showcase today was the ability to have bookmarks on your timeline which will act as triggers to perform an action. In this case, the action is going to be to change the state of the image of Angela to other poses, to kind of simulate some motion, make it feel like Angela's actually talking to us. So let's first of all select Angela here. We'll go into the poses section, which is really just another way of saying multi-states. And we'll click on add. And we can select the first of the second poses here. We can click on the replace image icon in your visual properties inspector. Select assets and this will bring us to the characters portion. There's Angela there. So let's find some alternative images that might be appropriate. I have some ideas in mind here. So I'm just going to select them and uh, find the ones that I think might be appropriate for this particular situation here. I just want to have her do some different poses and some different thoughts here. You can grab as many of these as you want and then just click replace poses and all of these will come in as alternative states that you can use. So it looks like she's actually explaining stuff. I'm going to delete the things that, you know, like this one here has a cell phone in her hand. We'll get rid of that. And let's just see what else we've got here. Yeah, I'll get rid of this one too, because also she's talking on the phone there. Now, here's what we do. At the various points along the timeline, right? I've got my timeline open specifically for this because this is all timeline triggered. So let's play it and pause it at the appropriate moments here. Let's return her back to the default pose here and just press play. When you describe something as medically probable. So right there, although it's not a new sentence, it's, you know, a little break in the sentence there. If you just hover your mouse over the bookmark swim lane, you'll see this plus diamond here. And I can click on plus diamond and we'll call this pose two as an example here. Just press enter. And if we select that bookmark, you'll notice that we have the interactions inspector suddenly appear and it's there at 3.5 seconds. We've got this action, but we need to select what that action will be. So if I click on this, I can choose set state and this will give me an opportunity to pick my target object, which in this case is the image of Angela. We'll select that 
and we can choose which pose that we want to bring to it. Let's try pose number two. Click next. You may want to reset the state on slide revisit. I think in this case I would do that. Otherwise, you know, it'll start with the state that maybe you left at the end of the slide and we'll click done. So let's move along to maybe the beginning of the next sentence and we will add another bookmark. This will be called pose three and we can select that action to set the state of Angela. And I'd like to use uh, something where it looks like here she's kind of shrugging her shoulders a little bit. So we can choose that there. Let's move forward a little bit. Maybe have her change poses right here. We'll just put um, a new bookmark. This will be pose three. And we will set the state of Angela to be just I'll select anything really. It doesn't matter. And then for the last sentence here, let's add one more bookmark and then we'll preview this. And this will be pose four. And the action for that will be to set the state for Angela to be back to pose one, let's say. You know, and you can experiment with what looks good or what's appropriate here. Let's click done. So now we have all of these different slide interactions. They are triggered by our bookmarks here. So they're totally corresponding to, to the slide. And of course, I don't need to figure out how to have multiple images in the same placeholder, which is really not something you can do with responsive design. Let's preview this and see how it works. When you describe something as medically probable, it is more than 50% likely that the condition was work-related. You don't have to be sure. It just has to be likely related to the work performed on the job. Describing the reason as medically possible rather than probable indicates uncertainty regarding the exposure and the medical condition. So that looks kind of cool and it, and it makes it feel a little bit like we're watching, you know, full motion recording of Angela rather than just a series of images. And you can experiment with different poses and choosing the ones that line up with the other poses. I just randomly selected those but it does make it a little bit more engaging when we see a little bit of movement on screen. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.